make it happen. <laughs> Hello? Ben! What's up? What's up, man? How's it going? I fucking miss you, dude. Sorry, who is this? <laughs> it's Dennis the Menace. Oh, what's up? It's all good, dog. Are we are doing the interview via phone now? Yeah. Well, I mean, fucking, I don't know. Stan was trying to... uh call you but like whenever i, kept, I give stan I big answering and it just said poor, poor connection over and over again yeah that's what i figured because you're driving i guess it just keeps saying that we can't connect to you it says you're unavailable but i thought the number calling me was dennis's number 516 no that's my that's the menace and the man show number oh got it got it okay now you have uh, men- this is menace's that? number right yeah here. this is this is my this is my personal contact so if you want to like talk at night All i'll right. talk to you Deal. <laughs> and you guys got some things to talk about now. I Retired know. life. Reti- we're ah. two high level fighters yeah, that are absolutely. now moving on to the next journey. Absolutely. Man, and like when I saw you, that you were going to retire, I was like, dude, this couldn't touch more to me than I think anybody else because, like I saw you say, like you loved wrestling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Fighting, you just so happen to be good at it. Be good at it because you're a competitor, and wrestling was a big aspect of fighting. Yes, and you can fucking make money doing it. That's a no brainer. That's why I did it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, so you feel the same way as me, or what? Oh my gosh! Oh yeah. The thing is, getting ready for like a wrestling match. You know, you know what you know. You've done it a bazillion times. You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna get hurt. There's you're you're not gonna get embarrassed. You know what you're you know the skill level. Well, you of might it. get embarrassed if you wrestle Jordan Burroughs in New York City. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, yeah, but you but but you weren't wrestling every day for years. Had you been wrestling every day for years, you wouldn't have yeah, gotten yeah, embarrassed by Jordan. You know what I mean? So like that was like one of those. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't fucking fist fight a man as hard as you can trying to knock them out every single day. Never. Like you do in wrestling, like you try to wrestle someone your hardest every day, so you know what it's yeah. like, you know. Was you versus Grand yeah. Manor in New York? Sure. Uh yeah, I wrestled Grand. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was for Ben. You, yeah. you just gave him too much of a lead. You gassed him out at the <sighs> end, but you, you, know, you gave him too many points up front. Ah, well, hang on. I we talked about this. That fucker, like, he made weight before Thanksgiving. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, but no, I just I I know. I'm sure you probably handle like the the pressures of fighting probably better than I do because you've always had a target on your back, like throughout college and high school and yeah, stuff like that. You've sure. always been the fucking man. Like everyone was like, "Yep, I want to beat Ben Askren." Yeah. I was always like the underdog. So for me, it was easy to, you know, move up the ranks. But for you, right from the get-go, like, yep, I want to beat him. Yeah, I mean, I, I always relished that thing. And I, my wife actually just sent me a picture and said, you did this. And I'm like, what? And then it was a it was a picture of um, that UFC had put up of, like, the walk to the octagon, you know? And it's like, yeah. And she goes, well, how did it feel? I never, I never really asked you. How did it feel? It's like, I loved it. <laughs> if you told me I didn't have to train that I could do that once a week, I'm fucking in. Yeah. I mean, I love to compete. I relish that opportunity. And, my, you know, my mindset, which I thought was really healthy, was always, dude, we're, we're in this wrestling room 12 months a year, and I might get the opportunity to compete maybe 40 times. And so... If I can, if I only get to show you 40 times that I've been working on it all year, I better, I better put my best foot forward. And then, you know, fighting, it's terrible. You get to fight three times a year. Right. I mean, one, one, time, in, one time in 10 years, I fought four times. But a lot of times, I fought less than three times. And so, you know, you relish those opportunities to get out there and show everyone what you've been working on. So I, I always love that. I, and, you know, I know obviously I'm going to miss it, and, uh, but that's something. At some point, everyone has to walk away from. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's tough. I remember like the first like two months after I retired. Well, I mean, I actually retired like twice, but one time I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> 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 yeah. After I lost to uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Rick uh, Rick Glenn. Yeah. Because it, you know, it, hey, but, that's my buddy. Yeah. Before that fight, I'm like, yo, if I lose, because that was my fourth loss in a, in a row. 
before that fight, Damn. I'm like, if I lose this fight, I'm retiring. This guy has no business beating me. And I went out there. I fought him. I thought for sure I won the fight. Like, my corner came in like, dude, you did just what you needed to do to win the fight. Cool. Then they're like, you lose. And I was like, fuck this. Fuck this sport. Fuck him. I'm done with this shit. And I sat home for like two months. And I was like, fuck, like, I'm done with this shit. I'm not fucking fighting anymore. And then I had some uh. like... I had some like lady problems happen in my life. I'm like, someone's getting fucked up. <laughs> you I'm know like, what? I'm gonna do one more. You know what? I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back now. Yeah, and I ended on the dub, and I'm fucking done with it. But you know, so, I, well, what do you do full time now? Uh, I'm actually a, a a lineman apprentice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm fucking. I'm I'm climbing poles. I'm working poles to keep people turned on. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to comment too hard on that because that would be pretty easy to knock that one out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, tur- keep people turned on, their lights on, you know? I got Yeah, and then yeah, the pole. I think what you said at multiple meetings. <laughs> yeah, well, he's stripping at night, so yeah. that's like his – he's got a couple things <laughs> yeah, going too. right now. Yeah. I could buy it. Yeah, and then hopefully, you know, this podcast potentially blows up. We can fucking – I can just hang out, you know. How is how is your your podcast doing? Um, well, I have multiple podcasts. Currently, I have a crypto podcast and an MMA podcast on the Rockfin channel. Which that that's kind of probably where you guys should go. I don't know where you guys are at or who you guys have sponsored, but there would be a that would be a great opportunity for you. That was founded by Rockfin was founded by the guy Martin Floyd, who founded Flow Sports. Um. It's too long of a story to tell you guys uh, over this interview, but yeah. either way, that'd be a great opportunity for you guys. For sure. Um, and then my other one is the Brutus Wrestling Podcast, which is on YouTube, iTunes, the regular stuff. Um, I do that for Brutus, the wrestling company. And that's so long. I, I like all of it. You know, I get to talk about things I enjoy. It's probably something I would do for free if I didn't have the opportunity to get paid for it also. Um, so, man, I thoroughly enjoy all of it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you're big in the crypto, huh? Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I see it. Um, I think that there's no, there's no doubt to me that it's the future and it's, and I don't know how soon it's going to be the future. It's just going to be the future, right? If it takes yeah, two yeah. years, if it takes 10 years, and that's what a lot of people say, you know, Bitcoin's not been around. I think it had its 11th birthday, uh, maybe a month ago. And it's like, well, how long does the internet take to become commonplace? Right. And, you know, the answer is quite a while. How did phones take to become commonplace? Uh, cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these, these things take a while because essentially if crypto becomes commonplace, it means it, it, it unseats the, the current world financial system, the banks, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of people are going to be very upset about that. And um, I think people have a tighter bond to their money than most other things. You know, hopping on the Internet versus, uh, you know, watching television, well, that's, you're not invested too much, right? You could do that and then. You know, I would venture to guess most people in America probably watch some form of the Internet, right, whether it's Netflix or Hulu or their phone, more than they watch regular cable television today. Um, but then when you're talking about where you can put your money, now that's extra emotional for certain people. Yeah. For now, a lot of – I mean, for, for everybody. I'll say for everybody. Because I'm pretty sure Jesse Jansen has, like, a good amount of money in, like, crypto. Yeah, Je- Jesse's a very intelligent uh, crypto guy. He was there early to Bitcoin. I wish I was in – I wish I was in as early as Jesse was in. When I first heard about uh, like Bitcoin, it was at like twenty five hundred. I wish I bought it then. Yeah. Oh, you fuck up. I yeah. know. <laughs> well, Phil obviously made money. Phil Baroni made a lot of money with Bitcoin, and then my one friend Space Monkey. There's no way Phil's lying. You guys are full of shit. No, yeah, no way dude, Phil's he lives in Thailand. Thailand. What do you no, mean? No, back in the day, one you championship. See this guy on Twitter, he's a he's a dumb stuff. There's no way Phil owns any Bitcoin. Bro, one championship paid him in Bitcoin back in the day. Dude, no, they didn't. You guys are you guys are eating one of Phil's lines. I'm First not. All, if 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 Phil didn't <laughs> get paid, it wasn't very much. Second of all, when one champion was paying him, they were paying him in cash. Not. I mean, you guys remember I fought for one champion for four years. Our <laughs> yeah, for years. They, did, they didn't pay him in Bitcoin. You're full of shit. <laughs> no, he got paid in Bitcoin back in like 2011. He did not get paid in Bitcoin. <laughs> 100%. You are lying. One championship didn't exist in 2011. Uh, then, it, yeah. then it was, what was the other one? Stan, abort. No, he got paid in Bitcoin. 
You it, saw it? Bill Baroni did fight for one championship, I believe, in 2013 uh, or maybe 2014, possibly. And he did not get paid in Bitcoin. The owner of one championship is actually starts against Bitcoin. He doesn't like it. So I can almost guarantee you that didn't happen. Okay. Then it wasn't... I'm going to go ahead and guarantee. <laughs> I, I feel like I shouldn't be guaranteeing because I, I wasn't there. But just knowing how they operate, they would never pay anyone in Bitcoin. If your last fight you could have got paid in Bitcoin or some kind of currency, uh, cryptocurrency, would you have rather that versus transfer money into your bank um, account? I mean, I, I don't think so. I, I, I see it as regular money, right? And um, for most people, they would say, and it's by everybody, you shouldn't put a large portion of your wealth into cryptocurrency, right? Right. Um, At this point, yeah, it's volatile. volatile. Yeah, it's very volatile. Now, right. now, putting some of your money in there, you know, say, Five percent, ten percent. Your net wealth probably a good idea, but putting fifty percent in or putting very large, large sums of money, especially say if you're talking about a fight first, you, I haven't paid taxes on that yet. I get my money, I gotta go pay taxes, right? right? Uh, probably thirty to forty percent. So putting a hundred percent of it into Bitcoin and then watch, watching it fluctuate. I mean, if it was November of 2017, which was my last fight in one championship, that was fantastic because it would have turned into two two to three x what it was yeah but in the case that it was on the downturn and i haven't made that right there for because because cryptocurrency is essentially i can't believe you bought phil's bullshit about one championship paying him bro Bitcoin. if, if it wasn't one then it was dream lie. if it wasn't one it was dream one of the Jap- japanese asian I companies i want to see you go find alex jones to give me the documents yeah, I'll ask him to produce receipts. I know he bought a strip club and a grape farm with his Bitcoin money. Really? Right. Bro, oh. and now he lives the fucking dream. He lives and moved to Thailand. He has money. Oh, uh, you are just buying. You're buying all of his lies, aren't you? No, not at all. I call bullshit on a lot of his stuff, but that I'm gonna <laughs> believe because of the financials that he produces. Uh, but then even my other boy, not- he started mining Bitcoin. He bought like the miners. Who? My friend in Rhode Island. His name is Space Monkey. Oh, nice. He's an old school cool. Hansel Gracie guy. He started mining Bitcoin, and he makes like ranges from just from hooking it up to his electric, whatever, and having the machines. He makes like two hundred bucks a day. Yeah, fifty bucks to two hundred nice. bucks a day for doing nice. nothing. I don't get that. I don't. How do you I, mine a, a, a? Now that's that's now we're way down the rabbit hole. You don't even need to go. We don't. Yeah, need to go. <laughs> whole, right, yeah. right. I don't fully comprehend all the. I mean, I I, I kind of get a. Very surface level understanding of the mining, but yeah, then, then you're down the rabbit hole. Yeah. The easiest way to understand it to me was it's like a computer that just generates Bitcoin transactions and makes money for you. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's essentially why Bitcoin is so safe uh, and so fair is right. No one owns Bitcoin. So there's it's decentralized. There's all these nodes all over the world which any one of them can then look at the ledger, the blockchain. They can look at the ledger and verify transaction. And so, you know, they, they race to verify transactions, and then they get rewarded based on that, essentially. So Ben Askren will never work a normal job. Oh, I, Again. Can't, I, I can't foresee that happening. Have no. you ever worked a normal job? Uh, I painted in the summer of 1998. And that's it? I was a college coach, but I did other stuff also. Okay. For four, four years, I, I coached collegiate, but I also was, I was fighting. I was competing wrestling-wise. I wasn't doing just that. And then I was talking to uh, Stan a while ago, and I was like, I definitely started fighting before Ben Askren because I think I was like, I think I know more jiu- than jiu-jitsu or something like that. And he's like, no. And then he looked it up, and I think we started – actually, you started ben like – started before you. When did you st- – I was February, February of 2009. Yeah, I started in July, I think. Or June, and even ah. I feel like Ben, Ben started jujitsu because I I actually was around you back in like 2008 when you went to American Top Team when you were still a wrestler. Oh, okay, so that was yeah, that was like so I wrestled in 2008 a little bit because I decided to make the transition. So I was at American Top Team in uh, December of 2008. Yeah, oh, wow. that's literally when I moved to Florida because I remember you being there and being All like, right. oh, shit. Everyone was like, no, 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 that's Ben Ashton. Oh, hang on. This is the perfect guy to talk to. Bo Nichols versus Gordon Ryan is going down. Yeah. I know they, like, I tried to d- – I, I think it's easy. I think if Bo takes him down, he's going to get committed. Um, you know, I know you take away Gordon's whole leg lock arsenal, which is some of his best stuff. Right. I just well, – I would foresee him getting committed. I mean, if I'm Bo – 
I, I can't foresee Gordon Ryan being able to actually take him down. Like, actually right. get a takedown. Now, so if I'm Bo, I'm going to fucking stall it out for whatever time I'm taking down with 20 seconds left to win. But the thing is, so Gordon Ryan, I think, I mean, obviously he's got an ego. He's fucking one of the best world champions in the you know jiu-jitsu community. Yeah, but he's sure. been working with my homie Kyle Sermonera. You know Kyle. You mean Gordon. That was a big yeah. Sir. Yeah. Sir. Big, big sir. Yeah. So I would imagine Ryan Gordon's going to go out there and, like, see where he's at in the wrestling. Yeah, but he can't take down both. He's definitely going to try, and I, I, I like that. That's going to be interesting for me. Mean he, can. he He can't take Bo down. If Bo doesn't want to get taken down, right. he can't take him down. And then worst case scenario, he just taps him out on the ground after Bo takes him down. Yeah. like I he, think if Bo takes him down, and if Bo takes him down and there's a significant amount of time left, he's going to get subbed. Well, the way they – I know I saw Chael recently say it. They changed the rules a little bit. Right. So no leg lock. It's basically well, – there's, no, there's it, no leg locks at all. And there's points. Which, whatever, that's not fair. I can deal. I can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. It's an old school Naga match. So basically, Bo could take him down, put his knee in his ass, and if he could just break his guard and keep standing up, making him get up. He'll yeah, beat him I just, twenty to nothing. I don't. Yeah, think but that... Bo has almost. Bo's got almost no, um, no submission training. I mean, very, very minimal, right? So right. I would have to imagine uh, Bo's going to be able to get take down if he wants to. I would have to imagine. That Gordon will be creative enough to, as he's getting taken down, or as both in his guard, to be able to execute on something. Right. I that's that's what I'm. That's it. what I'm thinking. Now, because you've been through everything, Bo's maybe thinking about getting into. What like? Yeah. What do you think is the best move for Bo? He's not. I don't. He's, I should do it. I should do it immediately. You know, he, he's waiting. He's waiting a year and a half. Not the end of the world. You know, he wants to try to make it a little bit. Right. Clean. Which um, is... I said I would have I would have went right away after college if I was him. Um, and the other thing I, I don't really love, and I, I actually advise him against this, um, but they're opening a gym at State College because he's comfortable there and his oh, friends there right. and he wants to stay there. And um, you know, I'm, that's not saying he couldn't do that eventually, especially once he gets established. Um, he could do something like that, but it, but in the you know in the short term, I think going to a better camp would be. Uh, a much better option for him because you you do have access to so many other people, right. right? You go to a big camp, you have access to all kinds of people to learn from, jiu-jitsu wise, striking wise, and then maybe once you're older and you're more established, you can go do your own thing. But uh, in the beginning, I don't think that's the best course of action. Now, do you think there's something behind? Let's say he goes to like AKA or or I don't know one of these bigger gyms and like gets fucked up. Do you think? He'll be like, ah, maybe this he's is not, for he's me. He's not gonna get fucked up. He's not gonna get fucked up. I agree, I agree with you because he's a fucking competitor. Um, yeah, he's a man. He's a man's man. He's gonna get in there and fight somebody. Yeah, like I know, like I I throw it back to even I'll say Ben, and even I'll throw it back to like Mark Kerr. There's sometimes like a grappling yeah. style has like a natural affinity mm. for jujitsu or submissions. Yeah. Like, well, oh, well, I mean, but worst case, like if you're sparring, worst case, you're if you're a great wrestler, you could at least take someone down, right. beat up and take them down. I mean, I remember I went and. Uh, uh, I went to AKA like my first year of fighting, and um, you know I was like, okay, I'll just stand up with these guys because you know, hey, that's probably what I should do to get better at that. And um, and obviously they're getting better at me. And Daniel Cormier was there. He's like, man, why don't you take him down? I'm like, you know, <laughs> his mom's sparring. I'm like, Daniel, I'm trying to work my stand up. Fucking leave me alone. He's like, man, <laughs> take him down. Take him down. Let's go. I'm like, all right, fine, boom, man. You know, and then I can hit a takedown whenever I want. You know, even against pretty good guys. Um, so, you know, you always have that in your back pocket as well. Yeah. Well, even that, when I lived in Florida and everyone was like, oh, no, that's Ben Askren. I'm like, I didn't know wrestling like that. I'm like, who the fuck's Ben Askren? They're like, nah, he's the wrestler. He's the guy yeah, in wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw that you were transferring to MMA, and that's why I knew that you started before Menace. I was like, nah, I think. And that's what I wonder uh, about. Bo- uh, I, I wonder <laughs> about Bo Nickel, though, too. Has he done some jujitsu? good. Yeah, he's probably done a little bit or even enough jujitsu. A tiny bit, yeah. Hang on, but the thing is, is like Aaron Pico and the should other be. Thing, he's, a, he's probably a two hundred five pounder, uh, so that that you know is not as deep of a weight class as okay. a lot of the other ones. So that's probably going to benefit him as well. He's probably more, naturally more athletic than I don't know ninety yeah. percent of those guys at two hundred five. Not a lot of good guys there. A lot of great athletes in that weight class playing football or basketball. Yeah, but going Baseball. off of an elite wrestler gone MMA, like Aaron Pico is is not 
what, what I don't know why and he's Tito can't figure it out. And he's in know. a I, great I think, gym and he's a uh, a uh, fucking a good boxer. I'm like I don't does he just have bad luck? Cuz yeah. I mean that's a real thing in the uh, sport. I think I think it's he should focus more on his striking defense. Yeah, he just keeps Obviously, getting caught. When when you yeah, when you see him striking offensively, he's fucking dynamic. He can crush people, but then he leaves himself open to take those shots and with a 16 ounce boxing glove, that doesn't hurt you very right, bad. But with right. a four ounce of makeup, it's a totally different story. Yeah. Hey guys, I, I got to run. You guys should get on the Rockford Network. Check it out. Yeah, just send me a message if you want to talk more it. about it. And Fuck then, yeah. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. All right, bro. Thank you, man. You're the man, Ben. Thank you for the time. Ah, uh, love me some Ben. Yeah. We oh, we kept him way longer than he expected. He was only he had till six o'clock, so I think he's late for whatever he was yeah. doing. Well, the thing is, we were talking about things he fucking really likes to talk about. We weren't like, oh, Ben, like, so you retired. What, you know, he's by the questions he, like, Well, I didn't want to go there because all week he had, like, retirement yeah. questions and whatnot. I wanted to go even deeper with him, but I was just like, ah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't, I can't really. I, I feel like that's somewhere I'd be, like, sitting in the room with him, drinking a beer. and Well, then getting, well I knew that you needed that little moment, conversation with him. Yeah, you, I feel like I got pushed into it. And also, I feel like he was just like, oh, okay, ask me about retirement. He wasn't like, hey, how was you? You know what I mean? It was, you know. But nah, like we always say, he, he's a good egg, Ben Askren. Yeah, fuck yeah. It sucks that the video wasn't working. It yeah. was definitely his internet. It was yeah, the fact that he was in his car driving. I, I would have liked to see that mug. Eh, we saw it for like two seconds. It was pitch black dark, so it wouldn't uh, have been that great of a video. Uh, okay. but. And uh, he was driving somewhere. I think he's driving to teach and like. We I we wanted to ask him that, but we'll get him on again one day. But like I was about to ask him about his gym and show. Like he's that. getting hip surgery. Oh word! Oh, you didn't see any of that? No. He has to get like that's why he retired. He has to get major hip surgery. Oh. So he was like, you know, like the training. I'm a little fucked up. So like, and even I think he alluded a little bit. He's like, if I have to train more than one day, I feel like his last couple fights, like obviously they were tough. Maya Masvidal, he wasn't training the way he needed to because he had hip problems. So at this point, he's like, uh, two losses in a row. The next fight's going to be a tough guy, too, because my right. name value. And I have hip problems. I can't really train for it, so I got to figure out what I'm doing. And then even he posted, like, I know he did an interview with, I think, TMZ. And he said, like, good news that he heard today or yesterday was that he, th he was on the hip surgery was going to take him out, and he couldn't even wrestle anymore. And then he heard today that there's other people that have gotten the same surgery he needs that now wrestle. So at least work out. Yeah. So he'll be able to at least continue wrestling, training, and training other people. Not competing. And you heard him. He doesn't really – he'll miss competing at some point. I'm sure you miss competing. But at the same time, then you weigh the options. You're like, uh, eh, all right, I'm good, you know. Well, what it is is like when I used to compete the – the victory was sweet because of all the work that I put in to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like and it's almost like when you win, that win feels better than all that hard work you did. Yeah. Sacrifice. Yeah. Now a days for me it's like, man, I feel like that win and I look back at like all the hard work I did and like what I what how much that hurt and I'm like I feel like that outweighs the victory. The, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, Ben is the only guy. So I think there's only, like, fucking three people, and Ben's one of them every time that kicks us off the phone. Well, no, because he's, like, yo, busy you, as you, fuck. you yeah. have 15 minutes. Here's your 15 minutes. Well, no, he gave us, like, a half hour, but and even more than that because we were supposed to get him at 645. But even usually people like Bedford, everyone winds up on the – I tell them 1015, you tell them 1015, we wind up on the – FaceTime or phone, whatever, with them for like an hour because we're just talking, broing right. out. Ben's that guy. He's got too much shit. He's got a lot of shit going on. Yeah. And he's business. Yeah. And I fuck with that. Yeah. So, big fan of Ben Askren. Like, I'm definitely like, I don't know. If he, if he falls off the map for, you know, in the MMA world or the wrestling world somehow. No I'm, I'm still hitting up Ben Askren like, yo, you yeah, want to no shoot the chance. shit? No chance. Yeah, he's too smart. Too smart. Yeah, he's got too much knowledge and like wisdom. Like Chael, like he's out of the well, fight. Even, that was know, something I, mean, I wanted to fight game, but 
Chael's podcast is amazing. Right. That's something I wanted to compliment Ben on. I haven't listened to his crypto podcast yet, but I listen to him and his podcast that he does with the guy Front Row Brian, and yeah. it's fucking good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And he, Chael, I mean, uh, Ben is similar to Chael in that he just spits out some shit, and then you're like, oh, all right. Damn. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I could see that. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. I fuck with that. Yeah, you need to get more like that, Stan. I'm trying. Nah, yeah. You know who needs to get more like that? You. <laughs> I have good analogies. Do you? Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah, sometimes. Which yeah, that, sometimes is every once in a while, Stan. 